Okay, the oils are. I might give the tubes a good brief polish with a toothbrush. Just a nice dry toothbrush. Just carefully run over the tops of them. Just so they can look pretty and reflect like a new tube. That's not hard to do. All you do is get a. Uh, you don't touch these labels because they can they wipe off with your sweaty hands. You get a tissue and a, a bit of methylated like spirits and just polish the glass and they'll come up looking brand new. But don't touch the labels because these particular tubes the labels actually smear off. I don't want to do that. Just do, I'm just going to do the tops of them. So these look really shiny. And yeah, another thing I didn't say that I noted in the previous video. This resistor, I tested it, I, kept, I did more tests and it's still well within tolerance, so that's good. Now that wasn't getting hot either when I did that, when I turned the radio on, and it was working fine, because yeah, due to these capacitors shorted out, and that put too much load in this resistor. So yeah, and then if they were well placed, nothing's under stress. It's just a good thing all the resistors are still well within tolerance, that's a good thing. So yeah, the majority of the heat is just a tube, but that's just normal, because all electronics get hot. Now I'm gonna, Use this to polish the um, metal badge, and in here I've got the little volume control uh, knobs. So there's the old electrolytics. You see they're huge compared to the new ones. A bit hollow and light because they want to dry it out. Okay, and here I've got the screws. This little um, screws are in there, and that goes around a transformer, just some sort of protection thing. That went, yeah, just keep it all original, like that. Don't know what it was there for, but it's there now. That's original under there. Here's the control knobs, which is that's just bronze, which you got to use some of this stuff. Metal polish and teeth brush and just scrub. And that will come up looking really clean. And I'll do this badge, and that will look clean too. But yeah, what I'm going to use it first hand is to just give it a good spray with some Smart by, multi smart by just generic supermarket brand, multi-purpose cleaner. And that stuff is brilliant. Look at that. Dust. Try and, yeah, see if I can do it on camera, but I haven't got a tripod, so I want to be very careful and do it with one hand. Hold the string out of the way. And this card out of this, the card in this camera, um, the wipe protection switch broke off it. I've had to use a bit of sticky tape to repair the card, so I might have a bit of trouble retrieving data off this card, but that's not nothing wrong about it. I could fix that with a bit of sticky tape. But yeah, it seems to be working fine. Now that's come out pretty clean. Just stains and stuff, just give it a good scrub. Yeah, that's coming off quite nicely. So, yeah, do the rest of that off camera and we'll see how she looks. Then we can do the um, metal parts and the decals. Okay, view as well. That's it, inside and out, it's all clean. And that's what the result was 50 year old dust. Now I'm going to show you how to clean this bit up. That's a metal badge which um, clips off, which you don't want to be too hard on that because that will never be the same again if I take that off. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of metal magic, metal polish here. We seem to have brought up a bit of pressure when the bottle from being in a hot cupboard. That's just about enough anyway, so I'm going to polish this up with it. But before I do that, I do these because I need a very small amount to do that while it's still attached. Because I don't want to get any in here and make a mess in these little grills. So what I'm going to do here, I want to just, yeah, scrub as hard as you can, but not too hard to do any damage. And this should get really shiny, this metal part in here. So have its original look. Let's try and do it so I can see it. Now these you can wash under the tap, so. There's nothing here to really go bad or the world is going to affect. Yeah, there's a lot of um, grot fingers in these controls, so 
should I make it clean? Just give them a brief run under some warm water if you need to and scrub to steal the residual um, polish yet because it does leave a bit of a grummy mess behind. Don't wash it off. Yeah, it's pretty dirty as you can see, but that's looking a bit better. Much more shinier. That looks much better. Getting in all the edges where the grease from people's fingers have been getting in over time. There you go, view as well, that looks kind of a lot better. I'm going to give those a good free front under the tap and a scrub again just to get the residual dried out cleaner off. Let's see how they turn out then. Okay, viewers, well that's the knobs all polished up. Nice shine. They're all, yeah, looking very nice now. Here's the front badge. I've all got the badge all nice and shiny. Looks almost brand new now. It's a metal badge, gold plated. Same with the arm um, crease the writing. It's not that nice retro font too, I like that. This is all polished and now yeah. I'm going to use a little bit of kitchen and glass cleaner Windex to polish these tubes up. So I'll try and get a good angle on the camera for you just to see that. Very careful as I place this down. Now as soon as you replace the electrolytics, especially in these, don't just put it away and not use it because they will dry out after a while. Just plug it in and Play it uh, for half an hour or so, every couple of months or weeks, whatever, however often you want to use it. And that will keep them last as long as they, po as they possibly can. You get the maximum life spin out of your um, components. So I'm going to put the camera down. And what I'm going to do finally is polish this cord up so it looks clean and presentable. So yeah, get my little cleaner. Tiny bit here, just work into the tissue. You don't want too much of them spilling down your tubes. Very careful, just around the top point where it's been vacuumed from. If yeah, that's where they uh, vacuum it from, in there, holds a vacuum and they cut it, melt it, and that's it. They vacuum inside the tube, and that's where they fill it from. A bit like a TV CRT, cathode ray tubes derived from these tubes. Then TFT also these are transistorized. Yeah. That looks kind of good now. I can see my reflection in that real nicely. Bit of finger marks you want to polish off but that looks pretty good. Just make a little mould so I push on top of the tube and just twist. Get the cleaner worked into the glass and that will look spotless and it does. Yeah, I can't do the sides though, as I said earlier, those um, labels will smear off, I don't want to do that. That one here has because I touched it. Beauty of this is, the RF cans are fine. I've got a good strong reception on this. Very carefully. That looks much better. Nice shiny topped tubes, that looks nice. Just polish this just for the hell of it if you want to, but you don't have to. That looks kind of good. Now I'm going to run over this cord. Put some in here, or even better, using um, actually, what I'm going to do after I've used a wet tissue with this, a dry one, and I'm going to polish them again. This will buff the glass and give them a nice shine. Be very careful you don't bump the tubes and break the pins off. So that would really make um ruin your day. Yeah. That dust isn't gonna come off, that's wax in that transformer. But yeah, that's an isolated set, so the chassis is not live on this model, but an isolation transformer is still a good thing to have when you're doing old stuff like this. Because most older ones are live. That looks really nice now. So now I'm going to do. Fill this up with 
cleaner. This will only hand down here a couple of times, along the whole length of the cord. And I'm going to polish up the plug top, get it all looking as new and um, original as I can. So yeah, I'll do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this rag up a bit, make it look good. Highlight like that. Bit of Windex. Kitchen and glass. There's more of this stuff, type of plastic in the kitchen, so we clean the kitchen and glass, so we'll clean this up good. Not much dirt in here, but I can see it's starting to get visible, the stains on this. Keep the cord off the ground, because the floor is dirty. But so yeah, you can see all the dust that's left behind from a dirty cord. It's a Conqueror Category 94, made in Australia, 250 volt, rated at 5 amps. So yeah, it's this old type plug top. Old core brand. Just give it a good polish so it looks kind of presentable so you could use it indoors, in your bedroom, whatever. Just keep it as clean and presentable as you can. Make it look respectable. Even if you're at a summit, keep it respectable. Look as clean as you possibly can get it. Just polish the pins. But yeah, the pins are pretty good. It's just got old house paint on it. Something must have been painted recently and they had this used last and the um, earth cord and this has just got white paint all over it. It's a yeah, 250 volt something grade, Sydney. Conqueror cable, Sydney. <laughs> made in the factory where the radio was made, which was made in Sydney, as well as all the tubes. So it's all made in the one place in Sydney, this radio. Except the speaker was made in Melbourne. But yeah, all the local stuff, gotta love it. There you go. All that dirt come off the cord. This is looking really nice now. So yeah, that looks kind of respectable. Now I'm going to put the case on, put it back together. And I'll demonstrate you the um, powering up sequence in real time. Set this up, get these out of here. Clean up the um, area and we'll get this assembled and we'll give you a yeah, a look at it, how it starts up. Okay, the oars I'm going to try and get the camera on as good at the best angle as I possibly can. Now this has to be pushed in at an angle like this, lift it up into the case. It's the shape of this radio that makes it hard and you're going to be very careful when putting it back together. Because it can snag components and all sorts of things can happen. Hold it, don't drop it too hard, slide it in like that. Now put the bottom screws in. But yeah, that's how it all fits together. So yeah. Now before I even do that, I'm going to clean the volume control with some contact cleaner because that's kind of noisy. See how I do that? Put it together. Okay, the oars are sprayed some contact cleaner into the um, shaft bearings. Skew it into the contacts. These aren't hard to turn or anything, so they don't need to put any silicon spray on these. Now I've got to get into the... I'm going to flip this up so I can get to the electrical side of it here. Very carefully lean it against the fridge. Okay, tuning volumes here, so... I've taped everything up so nothing gets in, so hang on, it's pretty hard to get the cleaner inside that. Okay, well, my original method I'm going to have to use here. Very carefully, very carefully. There you go, under that clip. And access a gap in that clip because you've got to get the um, contact cleaner in there. Whoops, this thing's got a leak in it. Yeah, it's broken in there, the damn thing. Now you could use a tiny bit of compressed air and blow so it forces it in, but 
I'm just gonna do it as, e as easy like this. So yeah. And they are actually pretty easy to turn, so I don't need to put any silicon spray or anything on them. It's actually quite free moving, so there. Now I'm gonna see there's a bit of dial that, so I'm gonna put it all back in its case. Now you gotta get your fingers under here, which go in here, and to pull it out. You gotta handle these things very carefully. So I'm gonna put this back in. I can't get a good view on the um, camera, so apologies for that. But here, lift up, and let the rate pull itself in. Here's a rate of the chassis to aid as a guide to help it go in. Yeah, and now I put the screws back in. There's countersunk ones go on the bottom. Scrape me now, anyway. Get it in there. Now, for some reason, one of these back screws is missing. I don't know, when they um, place a board off, must have done a brief inspection of the inside to see if it was complete and misplaced one of the screws or what, because this thing is absolutely original. Nothing's been touched inside here except my repairs. That's the only thing that's changed, is my repairs. But other than that, it's original and in good, um, excellent condition. Yeah. Actually, yeah, the bottom one was missing then. I might have a replacement, but yeah, I'm not, no, not too fussed about that. Now, if you had a, if I had a schematic and found a 12 volt. DC tap somewhere, or just rectify the 12 volt AC tap to DC. I've got to stick a computer fan in here just to give it additional cooling. But it's done all up how it is, like that. So, yeah, now that goes there. So, yeah, there's a pickup which is bridged and an extra connection to earth. Now, pickups like a record player connection. You could plug a record player into it, which I don't have one of those old pickup types for this. So, antennas are red, black's the earth, so it's to snap in through them, which is hard to do, so we're going to have to feed it through those holes. So I'll do that. It's one. Two. Earth and antenna all fixed up. Fed power for through. There. There's a model number sticking out. Model number 11 to 81. Don't want to go too tight with these screws, but. You don't want to damage those clips. Okay, well, I'm, a short, I'm short of two screws, one there and one there. So I'll, I'll have replacements for them I can get out of the shed. This must be put your fingers in to pick it up. I don't want to stress the plastic too much. Alright. Yeah, you definitely need another screw there. Which I'll pinch on this top one. It's not as important as a chassis being supported, so yeah. I'll find some replacement screws for this and it should be all absolutely complete. But yeah, there we go. Other than that, which is fine. Okay, if you're always going to put my little control numbers back on. They're going to go on a certain way, but I can find which way they go. The flat edge. Okay, it goes on that way. 
if it's a bit stubborn because it's being split a bit with a screwdriver. This has a very stubborn one. Very carefully just don't want to be too hard on these. So look carefully the flat edge goes there, so carefully do that, get it in. Okay, viewers, I got some replacement screws. I happen to match the original, so yeah. This is off. We do have power up now. Volume down. Turn it up slightly so I can hear it as it builds up. Look at that. Brilliant. Have a look at the tubes. They're starting to get nice and warm in there. Oh, look at that. Clean. It's a bit um, dirty at the high end, but that's not too bad. Nothing to worry about. Okay, the oars. Well, that's all repaired, so yeah. Dirty at the high end, but I'll fix it later on. It's got to work in a bit. They've got lunch artists here at the moment. Make sure they lose a wicket before. That's an easy single there. Put the cricket on, but yeah, it's all fixed. All clean and polished. And you look a mug now if you get out of the next ball. Fully restored and back to its working condition. So yeah. Proceedings in this partnership. Hope you guys found this video interesting, and yeah. Okay, viewers. Well, I want to show you one more thing. I've like got a modern Chinese little uh, yeah, loop antenna, which, yeah, goes to those modern crappy Chinese stereos, you boy. Adapted that to the antenna input on this. And that's improved the reception of this old radio very nicely. Also, beautiful music playing too, but you don't want to breach any, in, don't want to be in any breach of copyright here, but. I'm going to show you when I turn it off how, how nicely it just fades out as a capacitor is discharged. This is what I really love about these old radios. Turn it up a bit. I just love that. <laughs> but there you go. I'm going to put this inside and set it up in a nice little location where I could just listen to it. Yeah. Which is all fixed. So yeah. That concludes my repair. And yeah. That's all complete with this modern day antenna that works beautifully. So thank you again for watching.